Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I would like to give you an overview of Module 6, which is electromagnetism, and in particular, the third inquiry question, which deals with electromagnetic induction. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, the module is divided up into four key inquiry questions. The first deals with charges. In fact, the inquiry question says, what happens to stationary and moving charges when they interact with electric fields and magnetic fields? For summary, I'm just going to write electric fields and magnetic fields and charges. The next inquiry question basically says, under what circumstances is a force produced on a current bearing conductor in a magnetic field? In essence, it's the motor effect. The third inquiry question asks, how are electric and magnetic fields related? And in essence, what we will look at is the concept of electromagnetic induction. And the final question, how has the knowledge of the motor effect been applied to technological advances? And in essence, I'm going to be talking about applications. So those are our four key inquiry questions, and obviously I've simplified them in simple words just to save us the space here. I'm going to examine those four key inquiry questions, and it's important for you to understand what those questions are, and that everything that we develop underneath it relates to that particular inquiry question. When we look at electromagnetic induction, we are actually looking at, in essence, the sort of flip version of the remoter effect. Where with the motor effect, we deal with a force on a current bearing wire in a magnetic field. With electromagnetic induction, is that if you move a wire within the magnetic field, you generate an EMF or an electromotive force. Now, in other words, it's the principle of the production of an electrical current, ultimately, where here is the production of a force already carrying a current. So in essence, the first thing you need to learn is the concept of flux. Now, I won't, I won't go into full details of what flux is. One of my earliest videos is actually examining what flux is. Now, understanding of flux leads us to the understanding of Faraday's law, which is in essence that a rate of change of flux gives you an EMF or electromotive force. Now, that is the old terminology. It is actually a potential difference that we actually develop. Now, aside to Faraday's law is also Lenz's law. And again, this is an application where you have the rate of change of flux produces an EMF that opposes the change to begin with. Again, I have a number of videos that examine this in greater detail, but it comes out of an understanding of flux that we have an understanding of Faraday's law and Lenz's law. We then go and actually look at an application. And in this case, the application we're interested in is a transformer. And so now you need to understand, first of all, the structure of a transformer, its components, but how Faraday's law and Lenz's law applies to a transformer. Now, transformers are generally described as ideal transformers, that is the power in equals the power out, but that's not true in reality. So you also need to understand the fact that transformers can be inefficient. And so there comes the context of flux linkage or incomplete flux linkage to be more precise and understand the fact that the structure of the transformer is designed to increase the flux linkage. However, that also allows, also leads to a limitation and the production of eddy currents, which is another form, is another area where we have energy loss in the system. So understand the basic principles of the structure, function and limitations of the transformer. Finally, what we look is its uses. And in particular, what we're interested in is electrical transmission. So how does electrical supply get transmitted from the power plant to the local home? It's the use of transformers, but also appreciate why that happens. And we're talking particularly as to why we use step up transformers and why we use step down transformers in relative spots. Again, that's what's covered in this particular inquiry question. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me 
by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.